For more on China's space program, we are joined now by Fan Zhang. He's an associate professor of astronomy at Beijing Normal University. I want to thank you for joining us. First, I'd like to get your uh, reaction to these latest developments. Uh, first, the reaction to this top award going to the China Lunar Sample Return Mission. So that's the Laurels Team Achievement Award uh, from the International Academy of uh, Astronautics. Um, so it, it is award to the, uh, Tian, uh, the Chang'e 5 mission, which is a sample return mission from the moon. Uh, I guess partly because the, uh, the mission is quite impressive. It involves launching from another celestial body and then returning with high speed to Earth. So all of that is done uh, in one first mission, so, so that's a that's impressive technological achievement in itself. And then the uh, the sample brought back uh, nearly two kilograms of of uh, solar soil. Uh, also, um, give us a lot of insight into the into the science, the lunar science. Uh, for example, the age of the moon may be older than uh, than it, it was once believed. Um, so all of that combined. Uh, also, the, uh, the the international collaboration aspect was uh, was important because, uh, for example, the European um, Space Agency's uh, deep space monitoring network really helped. Um, so all of that combined um, in, into a, a, a into this uh, this team team achievement award really. And the other news coming out of Baku uh, is Tiangong is uh, is going to basically double in size. Talk to us about what the expansion means for China's space program. Just how important is this development? Right. Uh, so that's kind of expected because um, for all of the uh, China's launches, uh, there is always a, a, a backup plan. Um, so for the, the three models currently in space, there's a core module and then two lab modules attached to it. Uh, they all have backup plans on Earth. Um, so if anything goes wrong, they, they can be launched instead. So this 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 ones work perfectly, and then the uh, the ones in space, they they're ready to accept new additions. Um, so it's a natural progression to, to just go and go in there and double the size. Uh, currently, there are like 20-some um, racks for experiments uh, available um, compared to the International Space Station's 30-some. Uh, um, so it's almost there, but if you double the size of the space station and uh, the, uh, the space for, for experiments will, will more than double because you, you don't need to double the life support and everything else. Um, so that would be a major expansion in the scientific output of the uh, space station. And given that it is a key national laboratory up there specifically for science, uh, this would, would really increase its, its capacity quite, uh, quite dramatically. And so extend that out for us. Uh, what excites you about the program as it continues to move forward? Right, so in, in the future, there's a lot to, uh, to look forward to. For example, the lunar mission, uh, Next year, there will be a relay satellite for another mission, perhaps during the year after that, to scoop up samples from the backside of the moon. So that adds new data to how the moon behaves. Uh, the near side and the far side are actually quite different geologically. Um, also, in the, in the further future, there will be a, a, a Chang'e 7 to, to look for landing sites in the South Pole, to look for resources there, and the Chang'e 8. Uh, actually, um, people, the, the Chinese Space Agency was soliciting international collaborators uh, for that mission to be able to basically build the uh, the rough fundamentals of a international lunar research station. Um, so, so that's that's wide open. That mission design is wide open. So, um, so countries that that have substantial uh, interest in the uh, in lunar exploration can get on board with uh, with, with quite substantial part of the uh, of, of the mission so that that would be quite interesting to see how that develops yeah you're talking about international collaboration one of the things that i think is really interesting is as you look at space nations emerging space nations like china it's also offering uh, programs to give other countries a leg up uh, in one case training venezuelans to take part in the moon project can you talk about that uh, that effort Right. Um, so, uh, so the uh, the Venezuelan president, I, I think, just announced that uh, that the, the, the Chinese um, lunar mission would take one sort of Venezuelan um, man or woman um, to the moon. So that's that adds to the uh, to the international lunar research station. And there's already, uh, I think, Russia and Iran, or uh, also, sorry, Russia and South Africa already uh, involved in a, in a research station. So from the beginning, that research station is very open to international collaboration, just like the Chinese space station, which uh, openly solicit um, sort of experiments from through the United Nations. So, so all of China's um, space endeavors have this 
signature of its opening to all the nations, not just the, uh, the strong space going nations, but also the sort of developing nations, uh, because the next frontier, the space, it is ready to yield a lot of uh, economic benefits. Um, and, and at this stage, um, you know, having given them a, a leg up, have given them an access to space, especially the launch capabilities, um, would, in my opinion, be really helpful for their own sort of scientific development, the uh, science and engineering development in, in throughout the world. So, so that's something that, that I'm really happy to, to, to have seen. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a fascinating time. Fan Zhong, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.